Belizean Legends, and I am Bilal Morris, and we are here talking with the Belizean footballer. And these brothers were legends because they transcend a certain amount of time. But Russell Hulse, as we are speaking with here, comes from this original Spurs football team that uh, made some big waves in Belizean football in the 1970s. And uh, his story is a very, very historical story when it comes to Belizean football because Russell Hulse, um, being one of the original players from the first Spurs football team, um, played among some of the greats in Belizean football when he was one of the uh, young player that was entering certain teams. He, he knows about the teams, Landiva and so forth. And he will be speaking about all these very play players that he met and he played with. But Russell, um, as he's called Cheesy, Russell Cheesy Hulks, as many Belizean football enthusiasts know him as. Um, we want to welcome you, my brother, to the Belizean Legend Studios, man. And um, uh, it's been a long time, yes. but we we finally are able to get you in and uh, talk about this historical period when you played football in Belize. Yes, it's happy to be here. Um, of course, with the insistence of my friend, Mr. Orino Rio, <laughs> I finally made it in. And yes, um, it's nice to be here finally. Yes, man. We want to go straight into it, Russell, because, you know, Tell us about how your football career started in Belize, you know, from the primary school or the high school level. Okay. Uh, tell us about it. Well, I, I first started um, playing uh, football from primary school level. And um, I started at St. Paul Anglican School in the Corozal, in Corozal town. And uh, from there, I played with um, Fletcher College. And that's when I met my first um, good coach, Reverend Mickey, who taught me a lot about discipline in, in, in football. I remember when I um, first went to Fletcher College, I was all excited because, you know, I was a very good player from St. Paul and I couldn't wait to make the, uh, the team. And the way uh, Mr. Mickey did it was um, every, I think we played like every Friday, but every time he would put the lineup, you know, on the wall. So, you know, we practiced and everybody was excited to see the lineup before the game. And uh, when it first started, I um, I was disappointed to see that my name wasn't on the list. <laughs> so, you know, I'm saying, well, what's going on? So I spoke to some of the players and I said, well, how come uh, I'm not on the list? And they told me, well, cheesy. I said, your problem is that you're very good, very skillful, but all you do is, uh, you know, how we, we don't say dribble back when we say pop, right? So all you do is pop, 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 and you don't pass the ball. Yeah. So that's why you're not on the list. Well, that was the only time I learned my lesson really quick. <laughs> so um, I started passing the ball and um, managed to make it on the team. From Fletcher College, um, I was recruited by La Victoria Football Club in Belize. It's a very good team. I mean, at the time, um, our main competition was San Joaquin, which was a hell of a team, one of Belize's best. And uh, played with La Victoria. We um, played in the tournament in Belize City as a San Joaquin. And I have good memories because um, you know, we would take the truck, go to Belize City. We had to eat before the game, then go replay the game, and then took the, the journey back to Corozal. And it, we had a lot of adventures. I mean, a lot of times the truck broke down. It was very cold in those days. And sometimes I, you know, we played on Sundays. We would not get back to Corozal until around two the following day Whoa. because of problems <laughs> along the way <laughs> the transportation you right? to play against the road <laughs> i was cold yeah yeah but, you know those experiences you know you, you wouldn't change it for anything and you know the good thing is uh, i have a lot of great memories 
with La Victoria. Um, when I graduated from high school, I, from Fletcher College, I moved to Belize City. And um, we had ASC, they came to Crozal like two weeks before to play a friendly game. Right, so we were playing and the guys told him, hey, Cheesy is going to Belize, um, he's looking for a team. And would you guys like him to invite you? And they said, of course, of course, he will come play with us. And I agreed. Um, the following week, I heard of a friendly game between Spurs and San Joaquin. So I said, let me go see this game. And it was a good thing I did because when I got to the game, I mean, I saw a lot of guys my age, very good players, and they were giving San Joaquin a run for their money. I mean, I think San Joaquin won the game, but when I saw them, I said to myself, this is the team that I'm going to play with. <laughs> so I, after the game, I went and I spoke to the manager and I said, I'd like to practice with you guys. I'm moving to Belize. And they knew me from playing for La Victoria. And they said, sure, sure. So when I went to Belize, I started training with Spurs. And hindsight is that, you know, sometimes you, you, you have this feeling that someone from above is looking over you because like after, I think it was a couple of months in Belize, you know, I'm training with Spurs. ASC had a friendly game in, I think it was in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And that's when that incident happened that the truck oh, ran yeah, into the trailer on the road and you had a lot of yeah. players that got killed and injured. So, and if I didn't switch to Spurs, more than likely I would have been on that truck. You know, it's unfortunate incident. incident. Wow, Russell, for real. Yes, for real, yeah. Man, and that was a uh, man. I remember as a boy hearing about that horrible accident. And today in football, we are still talk Belizean football. Yes. Two years are still yes. talking about that that yes. thing about that incident. Where all yes. those top basketball players, as and well as football, football players, players died. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It was sad, and and you know, if I didn't go watch Spurs play against Hawkins, yeah, right. I would have been on the yeah. ASX team. So anyway, I am um, a very important piece of Belizean history there for you Belizean sports enthusiasts and football that this man right here, um, the legendary Russell Hulse from Spurs would have been on that very uh, trip that would be good there. So he's bringing some historical context to you mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, Russell, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, when I went to Belize, um, my dad told me, you know what, I want you to go to Wesley College one more year. I said, okay, Dad. So while I'm playing with Spurs, um, uh, I went the first day to Wesley College and, and we didn't have a game that weekend. And none of, you know, you go to a new school, nobody knows you. So I'm there trying to, you know, I'm quiet, so I'm just on the side. Then um, the Sunday we had a game, the following Monday. Everybody at the school knew who I was because, you know, it's <laughs> rare that a high school player in that time right, would play on yeah. a senior team. So Mr. Arana, who was a teacher at the school, um, was at the game and he um, asked me, Russell, um, we'd like to revive the football program in Wesley College. Would you coach a team? Mm -hmm. I said, of course. And that was my first experience coaching. Wow. <laughs> I coached that my senior year, I coached the um, Wesley College football team. What form did you go into when you went to Wesley College? You know, Wesley, I think they had fifth or fifth. Okay, fifth, fifth bar. Yeah, I went straight to fifth. You yeah. went straight, so you came from uh, Fletcher fourth, College, fourth, fourth, fourth. Fourth, uh, straight to fifth. Yes. Fifth uh, form in yeah. uh, Wesley, at Wesley College. Yeah, and then, um, you know, Mr. Arano was nice. He bought us, um, I have some pictures I'll show you, some shirts with the Wesley College logo in the front. And, you know, we made a trip. I told him we have to make a trip to Fletcher College to play them, which we did. And we had a good time. But anyway, um, going back to Spurs, um, you know, all my career, um, I was fortunate to always have good coaches and which is very important because they, they teach you different um, techniques. At Fletcher I had Mr. Mickey who was an Englishman 
So, you know, he taught that English uh, toughness, yeah, you know, football. British football, <laughs> you're going to tackle, how, how to go into a tackle and you never get off the field first, no matter what happens, we stay on the field. Well, when I start playing with Spurs, uh, Ray, um, he was hired by the Belize um, Football Association to come and train the, the, all the teams in Belize. And he picked the team and he picked Spurs. Is that Ray Davis? No, no, Ray, Ray, Ray Lockley. Ray Lockley. Yes. Yeah, so Ray came and he picked Spurs. So we, I was fortunate again, and Spurs was fortunate that we got, you know, the best coach in the country at the time. And um, he taught us, and I mean, the training was completely different than what we were used to. I mean, very physical. And, and, you know, again, you know, it improved my, how I played the game. Um, so, you know, I, I played with Spurs, I think a year and a half. Um, during that time, uh, we went to Guatemala and um, that was a very interesting trip. We played at the, um, the Army Stadium in Guatemala City. Um, then, um, you know, we, we came back to Belize and one of the great things about Spurs, you know, we were known as a traveling team because Teddy was Teddy our manager. Us. Yes, <laughs> he always um, had us going somewhere. Off season, we didn't have an off season because we were always traveling and playing. You know, we had a great time. One of the things I like about Spurs is the friendship that you make, you know, and um, and the talent that, that. Talk about some of those players and the Spurs exactly. team that played with Russ. That's what I was yeah, going to do. The yeah. talent that um, Teddy and was able to get for that team. When I first joined them, you know, you had Kizzy, you had the house brother yes, Andrew yes. and um, Robert, Ronald. Sorry, Ronald. And then you had um, Tillman, you had Keller Leslie. Hello. Yes, and then uh, Canalete joined the team about the same time I did. And then you had Mr. Ramos up front. And uh, you had Philip Neal, who we used to play defense together. Mm -hmm. And then um, up front, um, we had, um, yeah, it's been a while, I trying to remember the names. Um, Ramos was up front. Oh, yeah, we, we had Mundo. 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 <laughs> and then, um, two pieces. Then, um, oh, I can't remember some of the names. But um, when we started, the defense was with me. But when I first started with Spurs, I, I was playing midfield because that's what I used to play for, for La Victoria. So they knew me as a midfield player. But... Ray um, noticed my talent as a defender mm -hmm. and after a couple of games he moved me and I used to play in the middle with Philip. Then um, when Philip migrated to the U.S., uh, Ray got Bill Clark and it was me and Bill playing in the middle uh, until I left. Um, but you know, um, what I like about Spurs though, it was we were all young players. We were not intimidated at all by the bigger teams. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we were a good group. Um, Ray um, taught me a lot. He told me that um, the part of my game that he likes is that I p played like Bobby Moore, the English player because um, my style was I always waited. I never charged in. You know, my style was to wait to see what the, the attacking player is going to do and then you react to that. Yeah, yeah, I react to what they did. Um, and that was one of the reasons he put me in the, in the defense with Phil, which we had a good partnership. Um, I, I, mean, I mean, those games were great. I remember, um, you know, the, the big games, well, they were all big games, you know, some again, when they played against uh, Orange Rock, against Stud Hendricks, um, D-Line, when mm -hmm. we played against the um, the police team. 
Um, I mean, that, that was a good team. You had the Martinez, Mike Martinez, and um, Cass was also playing with them, one of my best friends, Cass. Um, then you had, of course, um, being from Spurs, the team that I always looked forward to playing against more than anything was Landiver. Landiver. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I was... That's where you met the great Mr. Ball. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, which was sad, um, I remember... Um, was Vernon. Yes, <laughs> I couldn't wait to play against him. I, you know, I, I would go watch the, the Landiver games and I wasn't playing with Spurs yet and I, and I used to watch him. And the way he played, you know, because I I always study all of the attacking players and I watch what they like to do, what they do in pressure situations, you know, because uh, one thing about people are, are, are creatures of habit, you know, um, when a certain situation comes up, they always do the same thing. They always go to that one bag of tricks that they can depend on. So I will study those players you know, so, um, so when I play against them, I know what to expect. But Landiver was one of the teams that I have always um, looked forward to playing. Then uh, you had Samokin, a very good team, like I said before. Avengers. Let's talk about Samokin, Great Malanga. Oh, man. <laughs> Samokin, they had a lot of good players. Um, Malanga was one of the best midfielders in Belize at wow. the time. And then they had Fred Martinez, who was, to me, was the best center forward during that time in the whole of Belize. I, I really appreciated his game. And then you have Don Tito, who was um, playing in defense. So, you know, so I can, and through the years, I always, um, whenever I, I try to set up a team, I always um, follow their example. They had, the middle of the field is where they have their strongest players, you know? And um, one of the things I liked about Fred is that after the games, you know, we would have conversation and and he would score some un unbelievable goals. So, you know, I was 16, 17 at the time and I would say, Fred, what do you do in those situations for you to be able to score that particular goal? And he would take the time out to tell me and it's not only Fred, but at that time, all of the great players during that time, they take time to tell you and to make you better. When I was with La Victoria, with La Victoria, um, Speedy uh, was Smith from Stan Creek. He used to take a lot of time to tutor me. A lot of time to tutor me. To on my game as a defender, you know, he would tell me, okay, if, when they're coming to you, don't look at the ball, you know, little things yeah, like that. Yeah. Just, just keep your eye on the guy because he can't go anywhere without the ball. So pay more attention to the guy than the ball. You know, little hints like that. And that's what I like about um, the older players at that time. They took you under their wings and they, yes. they were not uh, selfish. No, they were they, not at all. They explained to you being that you were a younger player, they didn't see you as a threat. They they saw themselves as passing on their skills on to you. Exactly. So a lot of players feel like they can, older players see a younger players who are very good players as a threat to them because they feel that like they displace them in some way, right? True, <laughs> true, true. But, but yeah, back then... People are not like that. <laughs> back then, no. And, and who knows, maybe because, you know, it was not a professional league, so, you know... Mm -hmm. It's not like the, the times have changed. Now it's, it's a, they get paid, yeah, so yeah. they want to protect their position. Their position. Yeah. yeah. You know, but going back to um, the Spurs days, um, you know, I've played with a lot of teams, you know, um, all great teams. But my heart is always with Spurs. Spurs. Even though La Victoria gave me my first chance, I, I always, if I had to pick my team in Belize, it would be Spurs. And nothing against La Victoria, it was just because, you know, we were all young players. Teddy was, is one of the best managers I've ever had. 
and we had good coaches. Yeah. Big up to the man, Teddy Martinez, Teddy Gonzalez up in Florida. <laughs> yes, the and great uh, Spurs promoter and owner of the Spurs team. Your boy Russell House is here, bigging you up, Teddy Gonzalez. <laughs> And then in, in, in La Victoria, we had the Martinez brothers, and it was Netty and um, Johnny who uh, used to run the team at the time. And those were the two guys that gave me my first chance at senior soccer. Because, you know, they recognized my talent at uh, Fletcher College and recruited me. But going back to Blee City, um, you know, Red Stripe was another great Red team. Red Stripe, yes. Yes, yes. Great team. Um, then, um, you know, you had um, the independence. <laughs> independence, yeah. Yeah, you never forget the independence because you know that after the game, there's going to be a lot of room. <laughs> but it's... Yeah. I only heard about it through uh, Cador Alto, Cador Turn. Physical yeah. game, man. Physical game. But, you know, it's all yeah. good when the final whistle. We're mm -hmm. friends again. Yeah, very much. Uh, before you go to talk more about your, your Belize City, moving out of Corozal to Belize City. So I just want to say that this is Belizean Legends. I am Bilal Morris, and we are speaking with the legendary Spurs defensive player, probably one of the best defensive players that have ever come out of Belizean football, Russell Cheesy House. And he's here in studios with us here, sharing his uh, career, his football career. So Russell, Belize City, yeah. <laughs> yes, Belize City. Um, I think any all football players in those days were, they aspired that they would go play in the big city, which was Belize City. That's where, I mean, that's the only place where you have like six, seven teams in one city, you know, a lot of players and very competitive, very competitive. And you had the chance of Spurs because I remember going to Belizean football as a 12 year old, uh, going to see Spurs, and Spurs was like a popular team. You had Landiva and you had these other teams, the Independence and the ASC, as you were saying. Yes. But Spurs was one of the teams. I think you all won a championship. Well, they are um, from not when I was playing, but I heard um, through the grapevine and talking with Teddy that. They, they were leading the league uh, when I left, because um, I left mid-season. And there was some um, mix-up with a game that was played on the protest. And um, I think that um, the league did... I mean, I, I don't want to say anything when I don't know all the facts, but it just didn't work out um, for Spurs. And I think because of that, um, they didn't get the championship, but you would have to speak with Teddy about, them, about yes. that. Yeah, so I, I never did um, win the league with Spurs. How many years you played with them, Rafa? Okay, um, I went to Belize in 70, started with them, and I left Belize in March of 72. Yeah, so a little bit over two years. Yeah, yeah. You then made your mark in Belizean football as this very good defensive player being identified by the, some of the legends. Uh, as you talk about Fred Martinez and uh, the Malangas and all of those who were able, were able to bring you up under their wings and show you talk about the uh, Speedy Henry who showed you how to play defensive football in a lot of ways. And you migrated to the United States. Um, Talk about how your career continued here in Los Angeles, Russell. Okay. Um, you know, playing with Spurs, it's not that I had planned to migrate to the United States, but this is something that I will never forget. Um, there was this um, player that played with Red Stripes who I admired a lot, Como. Yeah. Great midfielder. I mean, I admire his game. I used to, I was, was one of the players that when I wasn't playing, I would always watch him. And there were many others, you know, because you had Gas. Who could forget Gas? Yes. You had Malcolm. I, feel, Malcolm. <laughs> I mean, we had a lot of great players in the league. Um, but anyway, um, I heard that Poma had got uh, injured. And I heard that he also had a stroke. 
and I remember this vividly. I went to, I think it was Majestic, and he was out there with his crutches, and I could barely move. And I mean, I felt like I was going to cry when I saw him. Because you here you have a player who gave everything to the Belize football. And to me, they were not trying to help him at all. Yes. And when I saw that, I said to myself, I am not going to let that happen to me. <laughs> so I'm not going to be in a position where I can't support a family or anybody. I'm injured and they're not taking care of the players. And that's when I decided that, you know what, um, I might have to look for better opportunities. And that's when I started thinking of coming over here because, you know, back then America was a place to go. Yes. 